And that's it, people. We've come to the end of another WrestleMania week. And you know what that means? It's time to get back into weird stories. Maybe some things we don't like will go on the internet and moan. However, that greatest ever Royal Rumble is kind of shaping up to be a big deal. I mean, not as big as WrestleMania, but WWE wants that. So maybe we can get a few more weeks of love out of all of this. And besides, the SmackDown after WrestleMania was really good. I thought it was fantastic even though some of the vibes I've got this morning, or today, depending when you're watching this, is he didn't like Smackdown. I don't know what you want. Sometimes I don't know what you want. Either way, my name is Simon Miller. This is What Culture. Let's up those Smackdown downs. But yeah, who is upset about this? Who is upset Smackdown started? It rocked my world to put a smile on my face. It's getting it up. Shane McMahon came out and he thanked everybody, you, me, the fans, his dog, his grandma, I don't know, great auntie Peggy, for all the support over WrestleMania the last few days, the Raw, the Smackdown, the NXT, all that nonsense. And then said, hey, Daniel Bryan ain't GM anymore because he's a full-time performer, which is awesome. And then there was more announcements because he said, look, you ain't going to have to wait for me to tell you who's going to replace him because it's going to be the one, the only... Paige. Given everything that happened on Raw, I thought that was a really nice touch, and now Paige can transition into her new role, and she started off pretty well because her first, I don't know, order of business was to give us AJ Styles, the WWE Champion, against Daniel Bryan. What do you want? What do you want? Oh, I think this is a really good path to send SmackDown in a post-WrestleMania direction. Signposts work for me. We got the New Day versus the Usos after this, and while we have seen that match 65,782 times, they're both really good tag teams. They were fighting to become the number one contender for the tag team titles, getting it up. It was kind of what you expected, and the finish did come when Jay hit Xavier with a big splash from the top rope. And yes, now the Usos are going to face the Bludgeon Brothers at the Greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia. Harper and Rollins then came out to stare down their new challenges, and that was that. I mean, it was nice and simple. I don't think it challenged your brain too much. It's like you sit back and enjoy. And who knows, maybe this means the New Day are going to roar in the Superstar Shake-Up next week. And we've got to do something with one of these teams. Why not the New Day? Naomi then beat Natalia. Down. I am being a bit mean here, but I just I don't have anything to say about it. It was just there, as always, for the sake of being there. And they did have some, like, pre-vignette where Natalia was kind of mad that Naomi had won the Women's Battle Royale. It just fell flat. It fell really flat. I think... I mean, I've got... What was that? No idea. I just trailed off into the distance. Either way, Naomi won. She won after, after a moonsault. An awesome promo with Nakamura followed, and I tell you this, that man can play heel. Up. He acted all sorry and pretended to apologize for what he did to AJ Styles after their match at WrestleMania. And when he was challenged on that, Randy Young was like, look man, you ain't, you ain't giving me the truth here. Give me the truth. He just said, sorry, don't speak English. Wonderful. I'm not sure what we're going to do when it comes to his super babyface entrance, but I don't care. I think this is a really good swerve. I think it's a really good booking. I can't wait to see bad guy Shinsuke. I think he's going to light up the place. I just remember, I've got to give it down for the inane commentary because earlier in the evening, we did have all three going, oh, it's the crazy WrestleMania crowd. Never know what they're going to do. Going to boo, boo the good guys and, and cheer the bad guys. I hate it. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Stop patronizing me. I'm a human adult. I can do whatever I want. Can we all now please go to shows and act like the WrestleMania crowd? Because then they've got no choice. They they can't say this anymore. Again, if you didn't hear me before, shut up. Huge down, that. Huge down. I cannot stand being patronized on WWE TV. You know, it's not really that big a deal. You need to calm down. Right, it's controversial time, so lock yourself in and brace yourself. For everything with Charlotte Flair, well, hmm. It started off really well because Charlotte was cutting a pretty good promo about her match with Oscar at WrestleMania 34, making it feel all special. And then who turned up to make their SmackDown Live debut? That's right, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. That was cool, and it got even cooler because they then whooped the hell out of Charlotte. And I tell you, had a far better debut than either Absolution or the Riot Squad did. They felt like a big deal here, and they took out the champ. That's an up. But then it happened. Charlotte lay there all destroyed from her attack. Carmella ran down the aisle, her music was playing, and of course, she cashed in her money in the bank. And I'm sorry, it's a down. Now, these moments are always gold, and it's a great way to spike the crowd. Here's the thing. One, WWE has got to remember that when we do this, we have to do it quick. This one took an age, and while referee Mike Kyoda was so confused, I don't know, but it did start to get a bit awkward. I started shouting at my TV, just get on with it, lad. Just get on with it. And then she did win the title, and I don't think that was the right thing to do. And also, if that was your plan anyway, why did you have Oscar lose at WrestleMania 34? Now that meant absolutely nothing. And Oscar wasn't even on the damn show. She wasn't on Raw and she wasn't on SmackDown. I don't even know which brand she belongs to at this point. But couldn't we have just put Oscar in the Raw match and have Charlotte take on someone else and then Carmella cashes in? I feel like we just wasted Oscar's streak. I just don't get what the plan is or was and it feels a bit like we're just making it up as we go. I know it's not a big deal. I know it was fun to see Carmella cash in. I'm really pleased for her. 
I don't know, that's just how I felt. Just how I felt. And as we know, can't change feelings. SmackDown hit another stumbling block after this as we got the number one contender match for the US title, who's now owned by Jinder Mahal, getting it down. I genuinely thought WWE had finally seen the light and that Rusev was going to win here, but no, he didn't. He was taking on Bobby Roode and Randy Orton in a triple threat match, and the finish came when Randy Orton RKO'd Bob Roode. One, two, three. So now we're getting Randy Orton versus Jinder again. And didn't we get Randy Orton versus Jinder for a lot of 2017 for the world title? And didn't everybody get bored of it? Also, what happens to Rusev now? What are you going to do with him? You're going to put him in a feud with Bobby Roode? I don't think anybody wants to see that. That did rhyme though. It was fun. And why hasn't he gone proper face? Also, they announced today, WWE, that at the Greatest Royal Rumble, it's going to be The Undertaker versus Rusev in a casket match. So now we're actually going to bury, or at least put Rusev in a casket, are we? Fantastic. Sarcasm is not fantastic. Got some backstage moments after all this and we can all just give him one big up. We had Carmella celebrating her money in the bank when that was fine and enjoyable. Then we cut to AJ Styles who said he doesn't understand why Nakamura did what he did but he can't worry about that. He's got to focus on Daniel Bryan later. Which you do. That's very smart. And it was our main event which is crazy because I barely felt like the show had even started but that's what happens when you only run for two hours. It was Styles versus Bryan. What do you think? What do you think this is going to get? Exactly. Up. It was just excellent as the two went toe to toe wrestling as if it was the easiest thing in the world. It was fast paced, they did counters, it was just wonderful to see and I literally think I'm in love with Daniel Bryan. But there was no winner because eventually Nakamura stormed out and he started throwing knees all around the place before, yep, punching AJ Styles twice more in the balls. Twice more. Today, AJ Styles has sore balls. But it has left me pondering, I mean, where do we go next from this? Is Bryan going to Raw in the Superstar Shake Up, hence why we did this here as a little tease or or are we actually going to segue into a triple threat match for the WWE title, Styles, Nakamura and Daniel Bryan? And if we do that, I tell you WWE, I'm going to explode with joy. Anyway, this was a really good Smackdown. I don't get what the problem was. Made me happy. What are you going to do? Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's Smackdown. Like, share and subscribe. Make sure you follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE and read more articles at WhatCulture.com. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for joining me on this WrestleMania weekend. And of course, I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.